Hello everybody and thank you for joining me today. We are back into our series focusing on, on Palestine and the crisis, the ongoing catastrophe and humanitarian disaster that just seems to worsen every single day. And I'm glad to have had a number of lawyers on uh, who commented on the legal action that was taken against Israel, several legal actions, and I hope you find those episodes really informative. We received really great feedback on, on all of those and I am delighted that my guests were able to join me to talk about a very difficult subject. Some of them were impacted directly by what's going on. Today I'm um, speaking to Khalid Guzmar, who is the General Director of Defence for Children International of Palestine. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Not at all. So we've been in touch a little bit and I know your schedule has been absolutely hectic, but we'll get into, I guess, some of the, the areas that we, we focused on and um, just stemming on, I suppose, from uh, the, the discussion we've had f- uh, in terms of the legal case of South, South Africa against Israel. I know you attended that in the ICJ. But just looking at the figures as well, just using it as a point of reference, going back to the figures that they relied on in terms of what we're going to talk about today, which is children primarily and the injuries and um, the the killing of the children throughout the territories of Palestine, um, a very difficult subject to talk about. And the figures are absolutely startling. Back in the ICJ, the figures that were presented were 7,729 children at that point in, on the 11th of December, had been killed by Israel, with an estimated 4,700 children missing or believed to have been buried under the rubble. Again, breathtaking figures, deeply upsetting, but these have drastically, drastically increased since then. I think there's more children killed in Gaza um, in the past four months than there have been in the past four years in worldwide wars. So, Khalid, I guess my first question is, why are children bearing the brunt of this aggression and why are their rights so extensively violated throughout all of this? Thank you very much for raising this very important uh, case. Uh, and uh, back to the uh, children's rights in the occupied Palestinian territory is systematically violated. The fundamental rights of the children are violated by the Israeli occupation uh, widespread and continuously. Uh, but what is the new, and I consider it unpresented before, not myself only, but all or any organization, international organization who work uh, in, in Palestine, the occupied territory, uh, the NGOs, the international NGOs, are also they have the same conclusion that what is happening is unpresented before. Usually we use uh, documents, the main violation like the killing, uh, maiming, uh, right to education, right to, to health. But now we are uh, unable to, to document. We are unable even to control the number of the, the victims, of the killing. So yes, uh, the, third, uh, the first three months, the number was 7,000 7, Palestinian children killed, in addition to maybe more than 14,000 who are seriously injured. Now we are talking after five months, we are talking about 13,500 uh, children killed. So the, the killing is continuous Why everything is uh, going in, in the international level uh, normal. So today I came just a few minutes ago from, from the Human Rights Council. We have, I participated in a science event with the head of the Child Rights Committee, with the special representative of the, the Secretary General of the United Nations for Children in Armed Conflict. Uh, so, unfortunately, still they are talking about theory and theory about children. Children are not numbers. Children are human beings. Each child is a big story with a big uh, hope, with uh, dreams. So, it's uh, unbelievable why the international community kept silent against these crimes. Yeah. And I can conclude it by saying that the international community, the international system now is in a test. Mm-hmm. The, the international community, international system is failed yeah. to provide a child with a cup of water to keep him survive. Yeah. They failed to, 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 to feed the child with a piece of bread to keep him alive. So, Unfortunately, this is where we are now. Yeah. And then 
children are paying the price of this conflict and this ongoing occupation and ongoing genocide. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. And as you said, that each child has their own value, their own lives. And we do talk about figures. The figures are so difficult to get your head around. But we have to remember that these children are independent lives. And I mean, we've got to, to see insights into some of their families that have been shown, obviously, throughout social media. And it's it's absolutely heartbreaking. But you, of course, have been working with Palestinian children for decades. This didn't start, as we know, on the 7th of October. But you have witnessed and dealt with children throughout several massacres, many, many massacres, um, the ongoing siege of Gaza and throughout the violence perpetrated by Israel on children across the occupied territories for decades. Children were already experiencing severe trauma um, on many levels. So the question and the concern I guess we all have is how are these children, their families, who survive ever going to be able to recover and I appreciate you're a lawyer but you work very closely with the families how will they recover and how has the current aggression I suppose it's the next question impacted your work with children and their families in Palestine I mean you've already said you can't keep up with the numbers thank you very much also this question is very very important the question and both us in our responsibility how we can contribute to create the change for the, the life of the Palestinian children. So, uh, first of all, children in, in Gaza are subject uh, to, to a genocide started in the 7th of October. And in the West Bank, in the same time, they are also subject to ongoing attacks and killings. So, war crimes, crimes against humanity are committed in, uh, against them in the uh, West Bank. But when we compare the numbers, unfortunately, we will back to the numbers, so Gaza is the main priority now to, t- to take an action, mm-hmm. to stop the, the, the killing. So now we are talking about 2 million and 300,000 Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Among them, the highest uh, percentage of children around the world, it's about 47% of the population in Gaza are children under the age of 18. So now we are talking about 1 million uh, 100,000 even more. So they are in the past the percentage of the children who have been subject to, to be killed or attacked by the Israeli they've been around 20%. This genocide they are more than 40% of the victims are children. This is why the number is now become increasing more and more more than now 13,000 and 500 children killed. So uh, those who are, who, who are killed, but when you talk about those who are uh, injured, the number is, is double. And still under the rubble, more than 8,000 Palestinian bodies since months. So at least 40% or even more uh, are children. Those who are not subject to be killed, not subject to be injured, uh, they are homeless their houses are demolished and then more than 70 percent of the houses in Gaza is partially or completely damaged or bombed Mm -hmm. by the Israeli army so there is no way they are living in the streets in tents even that from the first uh, days of the aggression the second day of the 7th of October the 8th 8th or 9th of uh, October the Israeli political leaders declared a war against Gaza, and the prime minister, the minister of defense, was so clear, Mr. Gallant. He, in the TV, in front of all over all over the world, and he started to say that since from the moment, no electricity, no food, no water, no fuel, uh, no 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 medical treatment. So, what he is saying in front of the world. He is com- uh, and confessing that he is committing the genocide. Yeah. So they, the soldiers, they took the message as a warrant to do what they would like to do. This yeah. is why we start to see actions, even from the soldiers themselves. They are killing and destroying and uh, sharing it by uh, the videos that they are heroes. They are doing a very good job. Even the Israeli motorist, the Israeli minister of finance, 
He declared that there is no innocent in Gaza. Yeah. Even children under the age, from the age of four, they are terrorists. Terrorists. So yeah. Where we are. It's absolutely. So this is why, in addition to all of that, we are talking about the huge number of the children who are in Gaza, subject to ongoing, each minute they are under the attack, under the bomb, bomb, uh, bombing uh, from the Israel. So those, I am not a psychologist, yeah. psychologist, but I know what's the meaning of being in each second, expect that you will be killed, your house will be damaged, on your, even the tent, even, even now the massacres happened where? Happened after the Israeli agreed to give the uh, international organization to bring humanitarian aid to the civilians. While they are, they've been waiting for the, 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 the aid, they bombed them, they shot and killed just yesterday. The, this is the 20 times happened that they killed 10 uh, civilians in addition to maybe uh, 50 or more uh, injured. So it's like back while I was a child, we used to hunt uh, bears. Mm -hmm. So we used to put the, the food and when the, the bears come to, to, to hunt him. Now they are doing with the people like this. Yeah. They give them the food and then they hunt them and they yeah. kill them. And why the international community is still silent know. about that? Very few initiatives, brave initiatives came from international states, uh, from mission, uh, like in Ireland, in Belgium, in Norway, but unfortunately, still enough. the main, uh, what we call it, the main uh, state, the colonial state in the West are still supporting and feeding Israel with more and more arms. Of course they are. And I mean, the the bombardment is relentless. But what we're witnessing here that we've never seen in our lifetime is starvation being used as a weapon of war. And it's clear that this is a war crime. It's clear. So, I mean, the treatment of Palestinian children could and should qualify as a, it is a clear violation of international law and breaches the provisions of several humanitarian conventions. Of course, South Africa had raised this clearly in their ICJ case and um, proposing that the treatment of and the violence against children constitutes genocide. It's part of their, their argument. You've touched on this. I mean, but just to be more specific, how confident are you going forward and have you been and how are Palestinians feeling about the international protection for children of Palestine? Governments have failed. I think it's very clear. And as, although you mentioned there has been some small action taken by a number of governments, it's too little and, and too late. I mean, have they failed in their duty to protect the rights of children during this aggression? They have done so even before this aggression uh, began. But what are you feeling? Is there any hope, the attention that the ICJ gets and some of the legal action, that this will start to turn governments around so that they can at least stop arming Israel, for example, and stop being such allies to this genocide? Again, thank you for the, for the question. Uh, first of all, yes, since we are talking about genocide, our reference is the Convention Against Genocide. And the Convention in Article 1 or 2, I, I think, clearly stated that any state, anyone can stop the genocide and not doing that, he will consider as a partner in the crime. So I believe that fear, uh, the action from the, uh, the brave ac action from the South Africa was big thanks from Palestine, from Palestinian people to Mandela, the, the hero. And the South African uh, government uh, is very, very important. And uh, now we are using uh, the decision of the ICG uh, as a, a tool to, to, to advocate for the rights of the Palestinian uh, civilians in uh, the Gaza and West Bank. And of course, the case is not only Palestine, the case of the humanity. Mm -hmm. Those who believe with the principle of the international law, the human rights law, those, those are the ones who believe with the international law. But the others who use the international law as, as what we call it, an excuse that, yeah, there is international. Now I was in a workshop in the Human Rights Council. When I hear the, from the special representatives of the Secretary General of the United Nations or the committees, the, the human rights committees, I told them, really, I was feeling that I'm in another world living. I felt that I'm flying and I'm enjoying all the rights and I'm, uh, people are in the ground feeling that they are protected. 
which kind of protection? A protection is only, uh, only in theory. It's in the in the, in the international law, in the human rights law, in, in, in but it is not uh, in the ground. Mm-hmm. The children are not enjoying their rights accordingly. Why? Because there is no political will. The states who are uh, leading the world now, led by the U.S., are unwilling. They are able. They can do it in one minute to stop all the genocide and the crime. But no, they are unwilling to do that. This is why we, what I call it, I call it, it's a complicit in the crime. Yeah. And being, uh, taking this decision, it means that impunity to the criminal, to the state, to Israel, who behind the criminal, and then uh, impunity led to the crimes that we are seeing in the ground. So why we are always stressing on the accountability? Because no accountability, then the crime there. So if there is accountability system in force, there will be no crime because they will hold accountable. And those who, if they believe that they will be held accountable, they will never do that. But since the international community closed their eyes, is in support of Israel with more arms and more diplomatic support, and the state of Israel is offer them a full impunity from any accountability. With all the killing that happened, Israel as an occupying power must protect the children, protect the civilians, in particular children, and open real investigations for each grave violation to the international law. They never did it. Who is who, who holds accountable for the killing of more than 15,000 people? No one. Even they have been aware of it. For the, the, from the Israeli def, uh, defense minister called security minister, uh, what's his name, uh, Ben Gavir. Mm. They killed the child in yeah. Jerusalem, 13 years old. And he awarded the, the soldier who killed him. He, he said that you did a good job. You did the right thing. So yeah. it's a message. It is a message to the other soldiers that keep killing. Mm. No one will ask you. This is the problem where, yeah. where, where we are now. And it's clear to, I mean, it's videoed and it's documented. That's the other thing. But just, I suppose, the media here, Khaled, has been covering what's been happening in Gaza. There's lots of double standards. There's lots of misleading headlines and misinformation. But nonetheless, people are seeing what's happening in Gaza. Whether we agree with the reporting is another thing. But what they're not seeing is what your organisation has been documenting for years, which is um, the cases of children, individual children who have been killed or injured by Israel, not only in Gaza, and I, I'm speaking maybe specifically about the West Bank and other regions. Um, Israel at the ICJ have always claimed that anything they're doing is, is self-defence, and previously they'll claim self-defence. But we have seen, and I have seen cases recently, since since January there have been, the number was at 25 the other day, I'm not sure if that's increased, of individu- individual cases of young boys being targeted, shot and killed in the West Bank. For nothing. I mean, they're saying one child was playing with fireworks and he posed a threat to the um, IDF. But I suppose with those cases, are they they're separate in terms of what action might be taken in on an individual basis? What can be done for those cases and for their families where intentional lethal force has been used against the children and um, who offer no threat to life or serious injury? Um, your organisation tells the stories of these children. If anybody wants to look at the um, your website, you will see a lot of these children's uh, stories and their families' cases um, outlined. The ICC has often been charged with these investigations. How effective is bringing a case before the ICC, not the ICJ, so the ICC, in respect of these individual cases of children who've been killed? Yes, uh, first of all, we are documenting the grave violation against children in West, in uh, West Bank and in, including East Jerusalem and in Gaza. But the, the only war happened in Gaza started on 7th of October. This is the first time we have uh, we are unable to document because already uh, our staff in Gaza is uh, live in high risk. So they, he cannot leave the family, and he is moving from the family from place to place according to the Israeli restrictions. Mm. He moved in Gaza for maybe the seventh time. At the end, he was in Rafah just a few weeks, uh, two weeks ago. He back to the middle, and 
his uh, his house was damaged in the north bombed by the Israelis so now they are living in a tent so they are unable to wear we managed at least to take some videos to show what we call it stories from Gaza so we showed uh, some of them and one of them still in my mind I cannot forget her is the case of Dunya Dunya was uh, in her house with the family and they bombed their house by the Israeli war plane and uh, she lost father mother brother and she was alone but her uh, leg was cut off so she was dreaming we we filmed her while she was in the hospital and she was dreaming to to travel uh, to have a new leg and to study uh, medicine to become a doctor you can see the in our website uh, the videos so unfortunately after one week while she was hospitalized in the hospital israeli airplane bombed the hospital and uh, a rocket hit her directly and she was died they killed her they killed her dreams they killed her future so uh, this is the situation in Gaza already we have no detailed documentation but in the west bank we have the detailed documentation from our documentation in the west bank um, i review all the time the documentation i never find that there is any justification to kill a child because there is many different means to fit control of the, of the child if he did something yeah. and you can shoot him in leg you can wear him you can you can you can but they never do that the last child who was killed by he was playing with fire uh, or uh, what again or something like this. yeah which which risk he uh, caused to the children to the soldiers to kill him and yeah. then the family will be the bride the family will be targeted also by the soldiers and maybe they will uh, demolish the house of the family yeah and, and i mean also a collective, a collective punishment for the family yeah. and in that case <laughs> so, in that case sorry to cut across you they actually refused to release the body of that child to the family without giving any explanation so their suffering just continues you know it's now now more than 13 a uh, 30 sorry 30 bodies of children killed by the israeli soldiers and they kept the, the the body and they refused to hand it over back to the family what they are doing with the, the body i don't know maybe they were using the organs maybe they will miss, i don't know what they are doing so it's yeah. the punishment to the body mm. I, i cannot imagine even if uh, prisoners now it is a system Yeah. because of this fascist government started actually if, if, if a Palestinian prisoner uh, died inside the prison if he's not killed died by a sick or something like this they kept the body there yeah so this is where just... anyway there is different action can be taken we approach the ICC the ICC it is the main role in this point for the ICC I met with other human rights organizations the prosecutor of the ICC Mr. Khan and unfortunately tell he keep talking 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 I I told him uh, I'm not I'm a practical man I'm uh, not a diplomat that to the point every one hour uh, hundred, uh, five or six children killed during my meeting with you maybe 10 children killed and you kept talking we need an action action you you are not ful- fulfilling your job yeah. so since two and a half years You have the detailed documentation of what happened in you are doing nothing but in ukraine i'm happy that you act in ukraine but it was after two months your stuff was ready there and you collected yes and you issued the, 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 the warrant to arrest putin the president of russia i'm happy with that but i would like to see it also in other places not only in, in russia should be globally not for black and white This is a problem. The second problem, I believe that still Israel may be supported by other states. Talk about self-defense. I am a human being and I am uh, I studied international law. Self-defense is something very, very important and it is a right. Yeah. But to whom? To the occupying power? To occupy my, my land? To control myself and sit on my chest and beating me and asking i'm talking about self-defense which kind of self-defense to the occupying power each in the history each people who have been under occupation they have the right to resist yeah. 
to, to, to self-defense. Not the right to, 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 to buying bombs. Yeah. And now I'm happy that South Africa also back to the court and asking for uh, advisory opinion about the illegal occupation of the, the, the occupied Palestinian territory. And I'm sure the decision will be that illegal and to ask for uh, stopping that. So for how long do we keep waiting? I don't know. Yeah. But how, I don't know, the, the, the answer will be in the Western States. Yeah. How many victims you need to, 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 to see in order to take an action? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'm, the hope is there. I am very much optimistic that we will get ready from this uh, disaster and this is a genocide. Mm-hmm. And they will hold accountable. But our role, your role is to minimize the damage as much as you can while you are talking mm-hmm. about that and asking for accountability. And also to, to, to minimize uh, the suffer of the people, to support the people in order to keep uh, survival. Yeah. And of course, people are saying things, I mean, Western media, um, the people that um, are kind of just be- becoming live to what's happening in the occupied territories through Gaza. You know, that Gaza has woken us up and Gaza has shown us what's been going on. But of course, for years, aside from the violence perpetrated against children resulting in their deaths and serious injury, we also have thousands of children who have been incarcerated, who have been arrested, detained and put in prison away from their families. And I mean, we're talking children, not even teenagers or children as well, as young as 10, 11 years old. I mean, and that's something that's still going on. Um, I read a report recently that raids on the West Bank have increased massively and children are being taken from their families and put in Israeli prisons. I mean, they're, uh, it's a, like a hostage situation. You know, it's very clear that that's... Is, is that something that you see that should be... Well, it should be tackled, but will that... Um, has that been receiving the attention that it should... Um, and has what's happening in Gaza maybe focused us in the Western world, whether it's media or governments or NGOs, on what's been happening with children in general, let alone what's been happening in Gaza? The, uh, children in general, they are under attack. They are targeted by the Israelis. So we talked about Gaza and uh, in particular about the right to life and the right to, to, to keep a survival. And in the West Bank, yes, the situation is not Yani, like Gaza, but the fundamental rights also are violated systematically by the Israeli soldiers. One of the, the, the violation is uh, the, the prisoner's issue. Mm. In the past, the first event of October, I used to, say, to take the issue of the prisoners is less uh, yani, important than the case of the killing because uh, they will be released sooner or late. Yeah. But uh, they are, yani, they will manage that. But after the 7th of October, each child arrested was subject to different kinds of torture and ill treatment by the soldiers okay. without family visit, without lawyer visit, even the lawyer to represent the children in the Israeli military court. The first month, there was no court at all. Just they keep them in prison without any legal action. Uh, later on, they allowed the lawyer to go to the court and to talk with his client uh, through the video. And there is no privacy in this way because already the child is not uh, sitting in his house. The soldiers who are beside him or the interrogators or the police, so he never managed to express himself uh, and say what he would like to say to the lawyer. And then there is no the, the The new issue also, putting children under the age of uh, 18 under what's called administrative detention. Mm-hmm. During the, the years of the occupation, more than 56 years, we used to face maybe every year one, two, ten cases in maximum of administrative detention. Now, during the five months that passed since the 7th of October, more than 100 children were subject to administrative detention. Now, in the prison, more than 50 children under administrative detention means that they are in prison. They don't know why. They don't know when they will be released. Neither the lawyer, the family, the children themselves. So, and if all, for all of that, there is no food, you know, yeah. bad quality and quantity. 
subject to every day, to, uh, uh, humiliating, to be beaten. So just I'm watching the children and adults, actually, yeah. those who released recently, mm. the minimum, they lost uh, 20 kilograms from their weight, 10 kilograms, depends. So if, if we show the, they show the picture, how he was and how, before and after. And yeah. Yes, and of course, Ben Gavir and the, those the fascist government are so happy that they are doing good job mm-hmm. by uh, killing uh, the hope for the children by and killing the children and uh, the, the adults. So it's, it is a disaster, mm-hmm. and it is very important to, to keep uh, focus on that. Yeah. And uh, I believe that uh, we will we will manage at the end, mm-hmm. but. Or how long, I don't know. Can we also mention briefly, uh, you were involved, your organization and others, other um, applicants were involved in a case against Biden, the Biden administration. And this was a really interesting case. I know I'd contacted you before the outcome of the case. Uh, we've moved on since. But how significant was, can you take us through maybe the outcome and maybe the significance of bringing that action against the Biden administration? Because, of course, it was done in the US. Yes. Uh, this action, I, I actually, we did it while we believe uh, and we know the result in advance. But we take this action in order to show that uh, the complicity of the international community, the state, and uh, to try to check them uh, that uh, to wake up of what they are doing. And of course, since uh, the international community failed to stop the genocide, so we start and uh, the international court, the ICC, did nothing on that. So we started uh, to, to target uh, uh, or to use the, the universal jurisdiction according to the Convention Against Torture, uh, against uh, genocide, uh, to, to, to put them, uh, uh, to target them, actually, the, the leaders, in order to take an action, at least, if not, at least, to, 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 to support the public opinion who are all the, all the time demonstrating and protesting against the genocide. In the U.S., I can say that even what we achieve is better than our expectation, actually. The judge was very much care about the case, and he was very much affected. He yeah. said it clearly that this, this is one of the most uh, hard cases that I dealt in my life. And at the end, he confirmed that it's according to the decision of the ICJ that yeah, genocide is in, but there is no jurisdiction. Yeah. I'm happy with the, the first mm. part of that. And even that, now we are appealing the, uh, the decision. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're appealing the uh, decision? Okay, great. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm happy also that other action, similar action happened in different places, like mm. in uh, Netherlands. Netherlands, the first uh, court, rejected the case, but the bill court accepted. And now, it's according to the Dutch law, the government are uh, violating the law, yeah. and they are partnership uh, uh, in yeah. the, the genocide, mm-hmm. considered. So uh, now a new case in, uh, in Denmark, and another case in, uh, in Canada. And there is a new initiative come. So uh, it is a very interesting initiative, but we are doing the job of the state because Mm. there is no political will from the state. Then it is an initiative coming from those who believe the human rights with the humanity. And I believe this is my point is now there is two campaigns in the world, the colonization campaign and uh, those who believe the humanity. Mm. So um, at, at the end, I believe that we will win, and those who are now taking the actions and supporting the genocide, they will hold accountable. Tomorrow or after tomorrow, they will be subject to to be uh, to hold accountable. Yeah, of course, the, those um, actions taken domestically, I, I think we will see an increase. And I know there was one taken in the UK; they lost it against um, the UK mm-hmm. arming Israel. But of course, what it's doing is it's drawing attention to the fact that these states are aiding and abetting in genocide. Mm-hmm. And I hope to see some, uh, you know, uh, better outcomes as time goes along. 
So I suppose finally, Khaled, what would you say to listeners or anybody listening today? How can, I mean, there's obviously we're talking about the US here and without them ceasing their support in this aggression, we feel a bit lost, we feel a bit useless. But even speaking to the legal community who primarily listen to this podcast, what more can we do? What action can be taken, do you think, small or large, to to contribute to the effort to stop this genocide? My message to those who believe with the humanity, with the human rights, with the human being. Uh, my message is not for those who are complicit in the crimes or really they are criminals and I have nothing to say to them. Mm. And they will, hold the, they will hold accountable for the crimes. But those who believe with the humanity, uh, yeah, I, I, I do them to participate in any action to, uh, to, to work to stop the genocide. Any contribution from everyone I can. I, I. I believe that it will be contributed to the to create the change. Myself, I'm here and everywhere. I know that I'm not doing. Uh, I'm not changing. I'm not. Doing, but at least with my efforts, your efforts, and the others, I believe that there will be uh, another issue. Is also we are in this way. You are pushing those who are in a position to do something, and they are not doing that. We push them to do that in order to, to wake up their conscience, in order to do the, the, the job, to consider those who are in Gaza, not as a Palestinian, not as, they are human beings, and to consider them like their children, their families. So how, how we imagine, to see if families are eliminated from the, the, the civil court, from the life, why? Without doing anything, why? So we have to be... Uh, one uh, side to keep the uh, fight for the uh, to stop the genocide, to stop the killing, to stop the occupation, and to look for for for, for a world uh, without violence, without occupation, without uh, criminalization. Well, Khaled Guzmar, thank you so much for giving up your time and joining me today. It's been an absolute privilege to speak to you. It's not an easy, it's very difficult, it's very difficult for me to talk about. Um, I can't imagine the, the work that you're doing. I, I don't know how you do it and your colleagues, um, you do a fantastic job. And please, anybody listening in to, to check out the website for Defence for Children International Palestine, you will see so much there in terms of um, the documented work that you and your colleagues have been doing for years, for decades. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for joining me today. If you like the show, please remember to share and leave a review if you have a moment. And you can also check out our website, www.activistlawyer.com, where you will see some blog articles written by our guests and contributors, as well as some fabulous Activist Lawyer merchandise. This podcast was recorded in Granite Podcast Studio. Interested in starting up your own podcast, but don't know how? Granite Podcast Studio can help. Record your podcast in our state-of-the-art studio, which is based in the heart of Newry City. Our studio has cutting-edge and user-friendly technology and can seat up to four people. We also provide an editing service for our team using your guidance and editing notes to provide you with a flawless finished product, leaving your listeners wanting more. For more information on how you can get started, visit www.granitepodcaststudio.com.